Hello, people. I have to find out if and how wrong I was about a product. I'm here at the show at DSM Humboldt, which is just a weird name for people from Brazil? Chile. 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 Yep. I did not know. Yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking in... This is how that works, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what, what does DSM stand for? Uh, Daniel Schwartz Munoz, that's my name, my, my initials. That sounds very Sherman. Yeah, <laughs> Daniel Schwartz. <laughs> and Humboldt was a company from my co-partner. Ah, okay. So we, we, it's a joint venture between the two companies to develop this, uh, this line of products. Uh, I used to have a, a brand, DSM Noisemaker, and I used the Omnicap SIM, so I have a lot of experience with uh, making variable cap SIMs in, in an ad hoc. And, and some distortions and preamps, and um, and Hanno, my co-partner with Humboldt, has a, a great story of making pedals with uh, boutique pedals and have a great success. So um, we joined together, and it was the thing exploded. And everyone's talking about it, which yeah. is why I made a video. So here's what happened: I reviewed the ACS1 from Walrus Audio uh, Modeler. And then I made a comparison video to the Iridium from Strymon, modeler, good modeler. Um, and everyone's like, but, but, what do you think about the simplifier? What do you think about the simplifier? And I looked at it and I've seen pictures. I, it's sometimes for me, if I need to feature it on the channel, that means I, I need to get paid. You know this. So for me, it would have been calling these guys up. Um, uh, starting conversations with the company and that can drag out and be work. I mean, to be honest, you know, nice guy, but still we would have had to talk, I would have had to tell them how freaking cool I am and we compare penis size and all that stuff. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm, I have work to do, I don't want to. But then Toman sent it to me and you know, I've done a lot of videos on the Toman website as product demos. And so I had it on the table and I was like, I don't like this. That's, why is everyone hyping this? Why is it the price that it is? It, something didn't click in my head. But then you all were like, well, you did all the other pedal board things. Why don't you do the simplifier? Why don't you do the simplifier? So without contacting them, I threw it on the table and made a video. Not to show that it's trash, but to show what I felt that I heard. And I made that video and said, I don't get what the hype is about. Sorry. And I watched some other videos from other people where it did sound better and then your comments came in and why you, you're not, you don't know how to set this up. I don't know, I've done 3,000 videos and, and I think I know what an amp and cap simulator and all that's supposed to be like. You can't really do it wrong unless you dime everything or keep everything at zero. So everyone said, well, you're operating it wrong. And then I'm writing as a comment, while you're seeing what I'm doing, can you please point me at the part in the video where I'm doing it wrong? Because I really want to know, what did I do wrong to make it sound bad? And I'm not in the business of saying this is not a great product, I'm in the business of showing you wh what I find out about it. And so these comments keep pouring in, mine sounds better, mine doesn't sound like in the video. So I went up to these guys here at the show and said, I think the one that I had, and therefore also the one that is presented on the Toman website, might have had a problem. Maybe something wasn't right with it, because Maybe. my ears cannot be so wrong that I think it's not great, and everyone thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. I really think that there was an issue, especially if you guys who own one are saying, mine sounds way better than in the video. That cannot be operator error, because it is pretty self-explanatory, and trust me, I wanted to love it. I love the form factor. It's got fucking stereo XLR. Uh, stereo effects loop, if I remember correctly, right? Yes, stereo effect loops. So, I mean, stereo fucking setups in this fucking small. And, okay, it is not as small as it is here. Michiel, can you zoom in on this? Thank you, it's been a long day. It's not really that small because as soon as you start plugging things in, unless you have the really nice small pancake things, and you got XL, XL on it, it does get a bit, you know, bigger, but every pedal does. Yeah. So, form factor wise, this is pretty impressive. What they packed in here is pretty impressive. Will it be able to 
compete with an advanced modeler? Well, it can't because it does. It won't have the depth of the room simulation or all this. But what it does have that a modeler doesn't have is no fucking latency because it's fully analog. So I was impressed by the form factor. I was impressed by the layout. I was impressed by the the sheer uh, engineering of it. And I said to these guys, I want to make up for this video where it didn't sound that great um, because I have a big hunch that the one that Torman sent had some kind of issue. Yeah. It's possible. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, so maybe. I said, let's find out. And while we're at it, they have other pedals. And then there's the Simplifier Deluxe, which looks freaking ridiculous. What? <laughs> we have a channel here that you can switch between American and British and something, right? You have, yes. you have different power amp tube, yes. simulation, which is frequency compensation. Yeah, it, it simulates the frequency comp uh, the frequency relation when with the transformer and the speaker. So the impedance curves are different for different tubes, and we are doing that. And then you've got uh, uh, analog speaker simulation um, with a, a twin combo stack, and you you can move the uh, for left uh, left and right the mic position, which realistically, for me, it would be enough if there was one knob. I mean, do you really need that differently? Do you use that? Um, yeah. Usually we just set it in the middle because it's the, the optimal. That's what I had. I mean, how wrong could I have been about this? <laughs> I, I don't remember where do you get, but but usually uh, if if you have a problem with the high end, you correct it with the mic position. Yeah, absolutely, you you move the mic a bit from, away from the middle. Yes, like uh, it's. I like to call it a, a texture knob, like. If it's too harsh, just put it down. If it's too dark, just you work the other in part. conjunction with the EQ. You move the EQ a little bit. You move the mic position. Yeah. You move the mic position. You've, it's it, it's a fluid kind of a thing. Yeah. It is again. If you look at the tiny little switchy knobs that do your summing to mono or uh, uh, it's the through or the whatever what is this us ground, ground lift. Yeah. There is so much packed in a regular sized pedal. It's freaking ridiculous and. On an engineering level, you are a genius, man. <laughs> so now we've got the Simplify Deluxe, and you'd be hard pressed to find a pedal with more knobs on the top than this. I don't think there's a pedal on the market that puts this much shit on this surface. He has less knob than a 5152 channel. <laughs> well, so, so what do we, what do we have here? Well, we have here like um, it's a it's like having two simplifiers with two preamps plus three gains uh, modes. So you have the three modes of amps and three gain modes for each channel um, and two power amp and cabinet simulation stages, one for left, one for right, and in the um, individual reverb mix for each side. Oh, that, that's going to give it the depth that this doesn't have. It does completely. When you said that this cannot compete with uh, advanced modelers, this it, it, uh, in fact, it competes, and in Toman, this is above many uh, very um, deep modelers. And now I'm extremely intrigued, and the amazing thing is, everything to grab. No menus, no no, menus. Du no dual functions, no none of that shit. Yeah. But I mean, you went crazy. You have individual power amp controls and tubes for left and right. Yeah, that's uh, we imagine this as having a, like a two amp ring. The, the, for parallel processing, for uh, wet dry wet settings and stuff like that. So uh, many people use two different, very different amps for uh, compensating for frequencies and, and stuff, or or just playing with a two-channel amp and giving the space that you have with different speakers uh, on the left and right. So that, that that's what we want to, to to simulate, like having two amps in your room or two power amps with a two-channel. Uh, preamp. Now these things do clock in at, at, at quite a bit of cash. They're very small, but that doesn't mean you know it's small money. I think, isn't this over 500 euro, 550 something like this? It's four, 450. Okay, it's okay. below 500. So it is where those pedal modelers are sitting, but it is a different idea. The idea is you have it more immediate. There's no, there's no presets. There's no. Uh, latency, um, you have a direct control right there, and now with, um, well, it's a two-channel, but yep. I, I don't see a foot switch. There it is. You can 
Does it come with it? Yeah, it comes with it. It comes with a foot switch, the foot switch cable, and a Y cable, the stereo cable, so you can connect two guitars or two different pedal boards into the input, or uh, in the send, both the input and the send are stereo. So you can split it and use different effects for the left and right. For I mean, true, true stereo, true stereo signal processing. The ability to put this at the end of your pedal board, not needing a freaking um, DI box. Yeah, that's because that's because you have. I mean, saves you money. I just pushed the very good Walrus Audio Canvas DI, which is a stereo DI. That's a 280 euro product. Wow! And when I used my Uh, Universal Audio amp modelers live. Mm -hmm. I needed the 280 euro product to go front of house. Front of house. Now, if you're looking at 450 or whatever here, uh, imagine that that 280 euro product is already built in. So it's not fair to say, ah, a lot of money. Well, buy a modeler from Universal Audio for 399 and the 280. Hey, Perfecto. Hey. Um, How are you? Come on, poke your head in here. <laughs> Cameo. What do you think about this guitar? Yay or nay? Yay. So much yay. Even with the banana thing there? Oh yeah, that's that's the that's what makes the guitar. So my banana or this banana? <laughs> my banana. Uh, <laughs> get out of here. Okay. Um, you got to consider that that UA pedal is 400 plus the DI box so you're at 680. And that's this is already built in. A lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah, we thought that it has to have the DI inside. It's like it would it wouldn't be With, you need an effects loop and an EI and because you want to hear your effects when you're playing with the headphones. A professional product needs an EI. The, the Universal Audio pedals don't have headphone outs. It doesn't. That, no, no. It's an oversight. Good. Good. Yeah, good. I've, great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, UA. You fucked up. Love you guys. Um, so you put this at the end of your chain where it sits, you know, top left on the pedal board, but then this can be at the bottom it yeah, looks like you, you it looks like you thought of everything yeah in fact we, we, we thought of the where you were going to place it in your pedal board when you, the the foot switch should be next to your drives next to your your amp channel or uh, your boosters or whatever and, and of course the the outputs has to be in this side on the outside it's it seems very complicated at first at first sight but With, in, ten, in ten minutes, you understand the logic of it. I mean, no, what you got to see is one row, and yeah. then double it. One of these, and then double it. That so it's, it's actually half the controls. Yeah, and it's like one amp, another amp, and that's it. And if you know how to use an amp, you can use this. So last one, let's skip these for now, but why are there Nevi kind of knobs on here? Haha. <laughs> Because uh, we wanted we wanted to show uh, visually that it, that it has um, it's a quality a studio quality compressor. Looks I don't even care what it sounds like. Looks fucking sexy. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. No. Michelle, is that sexy or what? Yes. Well, let me tell you, it sounds sexier. Sexier than it looks. Yeah. Wow. It's a very different compressor from. Hey, Glenn, come here. Let's let let let's let's get the sexiness test from the sexiest man alive. Uh, Glenn, how sex? Hang on. The big question everyone wants to know is how would Henning look like with hair? <laughs> Glenn, um, how sexy does that look? Ooh, that's a Neve knob. Very cool. He says he put it on there to clearly say this is a studio type compressor, high quality shit, and he nailed it. Uh, can it do line level? Yes. Oh, cool. What kind of, is it an effect compressor or? No, it's a special, um, I designed the topology. It's not FET, it's not VCA, OTA or everything. It's a configuration of diodes. And instead of changing the, the gain, it's a really weird weird thing and worked out really well, is that I'm not changing the gain dynamically, I'm changing the threshold dynamically. Okay, cool. Yeah. So if this is line level, we could use this as Studio Outboard then? Yes. Could I get your card? I'd love to check that out. That sounds really cool. I don't have the card. Oh, well, I'll get your... Oh, here we go. Right. No, that's not a card. No, that's Orange, that's Orange V Guitars. Great yeah. brand, by the way. <laughs> I'll get it from Henning. Okay, yeah, that, that is very sexy. All right. All right. Enjoy. Nice to see you, man. 
And that's how we do that. Henning, connecting people in the industry, then going home doing nothing because all these people work together and then forget about me because they know better YouTubers. But that's how it is. That's my job. Um, so, most of all, most certainly what I owe you is looking at one that wasn't the one that I had and making you a video for free where I uh, remedy what I did with the other one. That's what I owe you. Well, we, will, we are gladly do so, okay? And if you want, we can send you one of these. And then we'll talk from there. Yeah. Do it. Bitnitz. I know, I know. You can't go wrong with this one. This sounds great, but this is boom. That's, like, that's your, yes, you have the pinnacle of creation for you. Come on. Yeah, well, it took me two years to develop this. Inside is a, it's a freaking Tetris with uh, boards everywhere. And Do you have small, small kids doing this for you? Yeah, uh, ac actually we had uh, Lego mans working inside soldering and they're still inside, they're playing guitar inside. I like you. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. um, we, the, the, the story with the DSM Humboldt simplifier continues. I looked at it, maybe I did it wrong, but that's why we're doing it again with a different unit. Let's see what happens. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, the Reverend Laird Michiel Possini, former mayor of hell, Scrum Master PDF license holder behind the camera. That's his full title. Um, and uh, uh, links below, animals at the end.